Hello guys and welcome back to episode 9 of Project Monaco with me, Pug Gaming. And boy am I excited to show you this episode. It's taken a while to get here, but we have life in Monaco. But before we do that, let's have a quick recap of what we worked on last week. So we have completed the harbour itself now and we detailed around the uh, yacht club as well and things really have taken shape. I really am impressed with how well this has come out. The props look absolutely amazing. The nighttime views you can see here really does look something with this building and I particularly like the little custom side section I added on as well. Very pleased with how that came out and it does kind of look like it was meant to be part of the original building by Senfcon. Obviously nowhere near as good but it was really nice to get that part together. And this week is all about bringing this area to life. We've spoken about it a lot. There's been a lot of comments saying that it doesn't look right with no people walking around and vehicles. So we're gonna say goodbye to propping and we're gonna say hello to real Sims and vehicles moving about Project Monaco. It took a little while to work out the best way to do that. And obviously we needed to place down some buildings prior to that. But this episode shows a few little shortcuts and a few ways that I was able to make this harbour come to life. And I mentioned earlier, we have people. This was the first person entering into Project Monaco. A fancy little bike with a suitcase on the back. Interesting. But of course, there we go. A few sports cars going past as well. That's what we want to achieve today. And let's show how we did that. Now I know a lot of you are probably thinking, well, it's not difficult to get people in these sort of areas, it's just playing the game really. However, with Project Monaco, especially this section here, there's not any, any actual uh, roads and sort of terrain that allows people to walk along. Uh, and what I mean by that is if you saw the previous episodes, you will see that when we created this particular area here, it was all plopple asphalt. And unfortunately, Sims are not intelligent enough to walk on top of that they would only walk on the land structure and um, pavements and roads that are around. So I actually learned a very clever technique from a Twitch streamer who now also does YouTube. His name is The Sheik. So if you want to check him out, there's a link in the description below. Um, and with the use of some pavements, and you can use roads as well, which have paths, basically you want to place down firstly on the area where you're working a, um, a standard um, bridged pavement so one this all this allows you to see how high up you need to place the actual uh, bridge itself and also it allows you not to lose it and allows you to higher and lower it using the move it mod tool um, to make sure that when we use our trickery that the people are still walking on the actual level terrain and they're not going to be sort of half in and half out of that so we'll be going to do that and another thing here you'll see is you can also regenerate and create the look of people walking down um, staircases so these staircases here obviously are just props so there's no actual natural way that a sim would walk down there Therefore, the only way to do so again is to use some pavements. So uh, what we're doing here, we're in, using the um, standard um, pavements from the game itself. I'm using the one with the bike lanes just because they're slightly easier to see because of the extra markings on there. But you'll see here, I'm pretty much just placing as much down as I can. Um, I didn't want to overcomplicate the uh, channels and path that people will be walking along. Just wanted to add a few here and there so we can add and create some sort of resemblance to, uh, <laughs> to real life. Um, we could add many of these all over the place, but one, it's a pain in the bum, and two, it'll take a very, very long time. So we are just placing the last few ones over here. Um, and obviously, remember as well, or remembering as well, if you're copying me, remember, um, that you want to also place the pavements um, over the road as well so people will naturally walk across and use it as a pathway um, so you need to connect them to working functional roads as well to really excel and get that sort of look going 
So now we can work on stage one of the sorcery to get this to work. And what we're going to do here, we're going to use the one by one events people generator. So the way this works is you place them down like buildings and as long as they're close to a road, you will get people coming to this area and pretty much just stopping on this area. So the way we're going to make this work is by placing these events um, generators down close to a road so they're functional it means that then the sims will follow the nearest path um, which we are hoping is going to be the path we're laying down here and they'll walk over to it along those paths which means technically they should avoid walking into the ab abyss um, and falling through to the bottom of the plopple floor and this well thus just showing their head, which is not the look we are going for here. So I'm placing a few down. Um, I must admit, this is the first time I've really attempted to do this. So I am placing quite a lot down. You probably probably won't need as much as I'm placing down, but this was purely an experiment for me. I wanted to make sure that we had enough coverage and at least I can then work out which ones were gonna be functional and obviously delete the rest after. Um, so it's just a case now of just placing these down in the populated area, uh, making sure that these are going to be functional and working correctly. And obviously, don't worry, that's obviously at the moment the um, pathways you can still see. Uh, and obviously, these ones as well are um, actually for bikes, so they wouldn't actually function as we needed to. But the um, part two of the sorcery is coming up, so keep tuned on that. But anyway, as I say, just placing down these. Uh, events generator and you'll see I'm placing quite a lot here but in the end I do realize that they won't actually work over here because they're not close to a functional um, zoning road so the road I've used here is actually a highway um, so there's no zoning around it so technically these ones won't work but we will still get people walking across these paths going from one side to the other but well that's the plan anyway so now we move on to stage two and the final stage of the sorcery. Um, and what we're gonna do here is we are going to use something that's recently become available in the workshop and that is invisible pavements. So there's quite a few on the workshop. Some of them work better than others. It all depends on sort of how you've laid your area out. So what I'd suggest is download a couple of them um, and just alternate and make sure the right one works for you. There are some very sort of thick four-way laned ones as well which obviously work quite nicely um, for a big area but I've just gone for these smaller ones for now um, and as I just place the last few connections here just to really utilize this area we are then going to swap over and upgrade every single one of these um, paths but before you do that one thing I didn't mention which I did do before is I made sure that I raised up the pavements as best as I can just before they sort of show their bottom um, sort of markers so you want to have it just one sort of tab sorry one page down from there because that's going to generate the perfect height for people to walk along it um, so now just a mundane task of upgrading all of these um, bike roads or bike pavement paths what you want to class them as so the upgrades are just going to purely be for um, standard people walking across. I think bikes still do go across them. They certainly do with the one I'm currently using here. So let's just get all those down and we'll then catch up shortly. So there we have it, we have our first couple of people walking down the artificially made staircases. So you will see on some staircase, depending on the angles and tightness of what you've created, some of the people will sometimes walk and sort of lose a leg or two on the odd step, but this is as good as we can get um, from the base game itself. So just tweak around a little bit and you'll end up finding the best way to plant these down. So whilst we leave that in the background and allow our people to walk around, it's now time to create some traffic in the water. 
That's right, we're gonna bring the harbour to life next. And the way we're gonna do this is due to a very fancy creation from Mick Crosshill. Now he has generated a beautiful asset. It is basically a harbour which he has created into a very, very, very small space. And um, it's basically one of our mini piers with a little step ladder to get down to it. So the plan here is to pretty much create a ferry path from one side of the um, harbour to the other and sort of generate a few crisscrossing areas um, to really make the harbour area look alive with people moving around all over the place, both water and land. And to do this, I did need to hide away some different buildings, being the um, ferry depot, etc., to be able to allow me to create an actual ferry um, sort of route and port and get the actual boats moving as well. So that was thrown up the other corner. It's an area where I've put some power as well, which um, I've hidden away <laughs> recently. So you guys probably never saw me plop that down, but it's well out of the way to not really hinder this project. And we're gonna have to do that. We can probably add in a little power facility somewhere down the line so we can sort of get rid of that later on. But for now, it's all good. And not only that, but we also were issued a new ferry as well from Cross Hill. It's a beautiful one, you'll see it on the screen now. And it's the actual ones that ferry around the harbour, taking people from one side to the other. So it's a great asset to have within this build as well. Now creating ferry paths and anything to do with water has always been a difficulty for me and I'm not sure whether it's the way the game plays or if it's more of a case of I haven't really had time to, to really get into it and test it out. Um, so it did take a little while to get this all to work. Um, it's probably more down to me not really knowing exactly what to do. So a big shout out to Mick as well who really helped me get this all working together. Um, I think the first time when I tried to create this I didn't even put down one of the ferry depots which um, meant that no ferries actually existed. So make sure you've placed down all of the necessary um, buildings to allow this to work. And now what you'll see I'm doing is I'm laying down the ferry path and I'm just gonna create a very basic one for now, um, sort of back and forth from one to the other just to make it work. That's pretty much what we've got to do here. And obviously you've got to lead a path all the way back to the ferry depot, which is where the ferries will spawn. So make sure you don't forget about that, which is what I did at first. Um, but yeah, that's something I've learned during this process. And it's been a, a learning curve to get it all to work properly. Um, but yeah, it's definitely been well worth it. You'll see it very shortly as we jump into a, a live play you'll see how good this works and the way that Mick has created these um, ferry terminals and the boats themselves, it really, really does look good. Keep an eye out, we'll look at that very shortly. So here we have it, a functional ferry terminal on a very, very small scale, perfect for the Monaco harbours. Again, as always, a big, big shout out to Mick. He really has made this area possible. And just look at it, I really do love these little boats as well. These little ferry boats do look proper sweet and I do like how they work. They're very, very well modeled. And as I say, they're functional. So people are actually getting on these boats, going from one side to the other. And yeah, it's all coming to life. And next up, it's time to place down the first of our proper buildings. And as you can see over here, I've created a little temporary area, purely just so I can plop down all the uh, appropriate buildings. Um, so I don't have to sort of mess around and try and find some more. It's a useful thing to do if you're working on a big project. And also it saves you wasting time scrolling through the, uh, the list um, of all your assets. So what we're doing here first is we're gonna try and create this odd shaped um, building 
right up against the bridge um, and just pretty much just overlapping some buildings here and the good thing about this is it's also going to bring in three times the number of people to this area because it's technically three buildings um, replicating one so that's going to be good for creating a bit of density in this area um, and pretty much just trying to follow as best we can along this uh, this line itself the buildings themselves trying to pick the most suitable obviously we haven't got these built exactly how they look in uh, real life but we're just working with what we've got there's a lot of good buildings not only created for Monaco exactly but some on the workshop already that do suit this area and, and more generic ones which we can get away with as well so that certainly helps this part of the uh, the area and you'll also see now I'm using the procedural object mod a lot lot more and the main reason for this section here is once you click a procedural object and create it into one you can then hire and lower it into the ground without the terrain moving so that's perfect for some of these buildings because that building there on the right the white one was perfect in terms of how it looked it just was a little bit too high so using the procedural object we were able to lower that down still looks realistic in terms of the uh, the doorway and the way in it looks um, and that just just made this section look a lot easier so that's certainly a tip I would suggest um, using in the future if you're trying to create something that's not quite there or the height of a building is a little bit too high um, check out procedure objects and you can do it a lot a lot on it and I'll be creating a tutorial very shortly and um, working alongside the creator so keep an eye out for that um, on the channel in a couple of weeks time but back to the build we are slowly creating something here it's nice to see some buildings I must say um, the area has looked beautiful in terms of the harbour but as you all say it needs some population and these buildings are going to bring it in we're slowly slowly getting more people in and the good thing is is the more people that come over to this side of the island will then be using all of our new ferry lines and of course the roads and walking across our special designed custom um, pathways as well so that's going to look really exciting there's some great cinematics at the end of this episode that really show this area coming to life so just stepping back a little bit here talking about the schedule for moving forward so what i'm thinking next is we're going to try and create um, a bit more in terms of population so that means we're going to be working on a bit of housing work next week um, and then we're going to slowly work our way up to the famous area of Monaco well one of the famous areas when I think about it we're going to start moving our way up across the apartments all the way up to the casino area and that famous hairpin for the Formula One so keep an eye out for the next couple of episodes this will really start to take shape and anyway back to the build we are creating sort of custom balconies using these bridges which I think look really nice and if you do look down the streets of Monaco you do see a lot of these little areas here where people would have um, basically sort of chairs and tables underneath this area here and it just adds to the atmosphere you can imagine people walking underneath here when it's raining and sort of covering from the sun and it's just the way that Monaco seems to look and there we go guys this is bringing us to near the end of the episode a few more bits to work on but look at that now we've got an actual almost a skyline um, not quite but it really does take shape and you can now see all the different tiers that I was talking about previously we have the harbour floor we've got the risen terrain along with those trees and then the roofs and then in the future we'll see a lot higher in terms of the actual uh, building terrains and the atmosphere will really start to take shape I know at the moment it's not quite there um, we need to really start building some height into the area but I'm really pleased with how this harbour's come along it really really has been a long long number of hours to get to this stage and we're not even completed yet we are working our way out we've certainly done the harbour itself in terms of the design but there's a lot more to do and talking about a lot more to do we're now just going to quickly plop down the sort of road layout here for the next section and I think this is what we'll work on in the next episode we'll build up this area here because it's a very nice unique area um, a lot of different types of buildings this is where we start to see 
the classic orange roofs that you see from aerial shots of Monaco. So we'll work on this section here, detail it, and then I think we'll be working on a new custom asset area, which I won't spoil yet, um, but when it hits the workshop, I can imagine you will be loving, loving this. But anyway, guys, thank you very much for your time. As always, if you enjoyed the video, hit that like button. If you want to see more and keep up to date, make sure you also subscribe. But I'll leave you with the cinematics and watching Monaco finally come to life. Thanks for watching, guys, and all the best.